With Fear the Walking Dead's final season coming out in the next couple weeks, I figured it'd be the best time to talk about the show and give it a proper video. As you may know, I've been pretty harsh on Fear the Walking Dead over the years, and honestly, it's for good reason, and I'm not gonna sugarcoat that at all. However, that doesn't mean that this show is all bad. Just as many bad things there are in the show, there's also equally a lot of good things within it. I think there's a clear rise and fall of the show, and that's exactly what I want to talk about in this video. So, you guessed it, in this video we're going to be talking about the rise and inevitable fall of Fear the Walking Dead. If you like the sound of that, be sure to subscribe and all the things, yada yada, you get the point. So, for starters, as you may know, this show was developed and written, for the most part, by Robert Kirkman. Yes, that Robert Kirkman, the guy from the comics, you know? And it was also developed by David Erickson as well, and might I add that Robert Kirkman is the executive producer on Fear the Walking Dead as well. But, unlike his Big Brother and Canon series, Robert Kirkman did not make a comic for the Fear the Walking Dead story, so this one was fully developed and fleshed out for TV, making it the first in the entry of the Walking Dead universe not to be adapted from the comics. Now, for me, as a fan of the comics, this was definitely daunting to me, because I thought the foundation for the Walking Dead was so solid in the Canon series that divulging out and creating something new, I was just worried about, because source material usually is a lot stronger in quality than whatever anyone puts to screen, to be honest with you. I mean, look at Game of Thrones as a prime example of that. I know I use that one all the time, but it's absolutely true. It was fantastic when it was being adapted from George R.R. R. Martin, and then when it ran out of source material from George R.R. R. Martin, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss absolutely butchered the show. Now, I didn't know that at the time when I was watching Fear the Walking Dead for the first time, but the premise alone is just dark. Daunting. We truly don't know what we're getting when it's brand new in a universe that's been established by some other main source material, but I gotta say, season one of Fear the Walking Dead just absolutely came out swinging. Set in Los Angeles, the show started out by following the Clark family, and what makes it so special is we're following Nicholas Clark at the very start of the outbreak, before anyone even really knew about it. Of course, there were rumblings online and yada yada, but there was no actual hardcore proof that this thing was happening. So, we follow Nicholas at the very start of that. That premise, in and of itself, is very interesting, but what made it even more interesting was who we were following at the start of the apocalypse. Unlike literally any zombie medium out there, in this show, we were following our arguably main protagonist, who was a drug addict. And of all zombie projects I could find, like, anywhere, I'm pretty sure that this was the first one to start out an apocalypse following someone who has that sort of problem. And I gotta say, Frank Delane, who plays Nick Clark, did so such an amazing job. But overall, what I gotta say is that premise alone is just absolutely fantastic because who's gonna believe him? If he sees something out there and he's known to be a drug addict who has a serious problem with substances, who on earth is going to believe that he ran into a walker? And just having that established, the start of the outbreak, is just such an amazing way to follow a story. And of course, we weren't just following Nick Clark, we were following the Clark family, which included Madison Clark, who's played by Kim Dickens, as well as Alicia Clark, who's played by Alicia Dendam Carey. And their dynamic coping with the start of the outbreak with someone who clearly has a problem is just such a great idea for a show. In the opening episode, we find Nick waking up to find his girlfriend has turned. And after running away, when he goes to tell his mom, Alicia, and everyone around him what he saw, no one believes him. I mean, why would they? I, I wouldn't believe someone who told me that either. But, of course, Madison Clark is a high school guidance counselor, so her having to keep up with her son who has this problem, let alone her being a guidance counselor, just sets up such an interesting dynamic. This very blatantly set up the story of Madison trying to guide Nick towards recovery in already very trying times. Can I offer you a nice egg in this trying yeah. Which, for a brand new addition to the Walking Dead universe, is just such a fantastic idea on paper, 
But of course, like all shows, it didn't last that long. And with the addition of some really interesting side characters like Travis, there was just a lot there on paper. I mean, we followed them from Los Angeles, which is already an interesting setting in and of itself, but we followed them from there down to Mexico, which is pretty awesome. I mean, The Walking Dead's main series is set to be in Virginia, so that's really not too much. In Los Angeles, you have some really cool scenery, you have some cool places in Mexico, and there's just a lot that you could do there that was never shown. And especially the fact that this show took place in the early days of the outbreak, there was so much to explore. And everything on paper there, as mentioned, was just so strong. The problem was, over time, the writers didn't know exactly what to do. And this led to some disappointment in Frank Delane, who played Nick. Now, the rumor has it that there was talks and negotiations for Frank Delane to leave the show in season three because he was unhappy with the direction the show was taking. But this inevitably came true in season four. And might I add, there were some very questionable decisions along the way. Even though the foundation was really strong, there were definitely some questionable moments that came from the first three seasons of the show. One of those being, and of course, the actor did have to leave for a reason, but one of the biggest reasons is the really, really horrible killing of Travis. And it wasn't that it was sad that it happened or anything like that. I mean, it was. He was a big character and all of that stuff. But just the way it happened was so stupid. And the way he fell out of that helicopter was like the worst CGI ever. It literally looked like something you would see in a Cartoon Network or like Adult Swim late night show with weird animations. Like it was just such a dumb way for him to die. Dumb ways to die. And the way it all went down was so stupid. Like, Alicia didn't even try to save him, didn't even try to do anything, and he just fell out of the helicopter in, like, the weirdest way ever. It was so stupid. I could go off on tangents and tangents and tangents. And this is where I'm going off script because I have a real problem with it. Jerry's getting upset. I'm getting upset. I don't like this. Okay, I gotta come back down to reality a little bit here, but the point I'm trying to make overall is a goofy decision like that and many others that were made in small little droves along the way led to the inevitable decision that Frank Delane was to leave Fear the Walking Dead, and this did take place in season four. Now, here's the thing. In many shows, people come and go. Actors want to leave, they want to pursue new things, yada yada, you get the point. I will never fault an actor for wanting to leave, but I am about to be a hypocrite because I am about to fault an actor for wanting to leave. <laughs> okay, let me be clear. I'm not criticizing Frank Delane and saying it's his fault that the show got bad, but it's his fault that the show got bad. Uh, I can explain. You see, Nick Clark was Fear of the Walking Dead. Him, as well as the other Clarks, such as Madison, who is arguably the other main protagonist, the two of them ran the show. They were Fear the Walking Dead. No matter what you want to say, this was the Clark story, just as true as The Walking Dead is the Rick Grimes story. This show is the Clark family story, but no. What did we get in that season? Let's see, we got Nick's death, which I know the actor wanted to leave, but we got Nick's death, we got Madison's death, we got the introduction of Morgan, the only surviving person out of the Clarks is now Alicia, who was never, at the time, a strong character, so they had to build her up, okay, that's fine, but did you really have to kill both of them to get there? Now, I know we had to kill off Frank Delane's character somehow. He wanted to go. There's no way around that, and I get that. But you'd think the writers could do anything, anything. Like, there's a million things that they could have done, but they didn't do. But you know what? You know what they did do? They killed off the other fucking Clark. What? They killed off the two main protagonists of the show. Now, I know there is a million and one people who have talked about this online. I'm late to the party. I get it. But it really is clear that this show was on a straight uptick, like constant uptick up until season four started, especially with the idea that Morgan was going to be on the show. It was just skyrocketing. And then when Nick and Madison left the show, nosedived, like straight up nosedived, because now it's 
The Morgan Show, which leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth, even Morgan lovers like me. I love Morgan. Morgan is one of my favorite characters in all of The Walking Dead's universe. But the thing is, when you kill off your two main characters to make someone like Morgan the central focus of the show, it's just, it, it makes me sick. Like, I don't want to watch that. And that, along with absolutely terrible writing in seasons four and pretty much all of season five, led to a sick significant decline that never ever recovered from Fear the Walking Dead, but that's until season six. We're going to get into season six in a minute, but I did want to wrap up what I was saying about Frank Delane. Now, again, it's not his fault, but it kind of is his fault, and hear me out. If Frank Delane didn't leave the show, none of this would have ever happened. They, I guarantee you, there would not have been a need to bring someone like Morgan to Fear the Walking Dead in general, and I guarantee you they would have went a totally different story route because they were building something truly amazing in Texas with the baseball field and with that storyline overall. There was just a lot they could have done to bridge the gap. I really do genuinely think Fear the Walking Dead had a whole idea planned out, or at least most of it planned out, but Frank Delane wanting to leave, which means you're losing your main character, just absolutely, absolutely ruins that. So while it's not his fault that the show faltered in quality like it got bad, I mean, it's his fault for <laughs> ruining what was the Fear the Walking Dead story, if we're being completely honest. That doesn't mean I have a problem with it or anything like that, but speaking objectively, if he never left, the show would have been different. I just, I, you know it. You know the show would have been different. However, like I mentioned, it's also just as equally on the writers, and it's their responsibility to make do with a bad situation. So, the situation was bad. For that, that is Frank Delane's fault, and the show would have been different if it wasn't for him leaving, but you're supposed to know how to write for this. Don't you go to college for writing stories and things like that? Don't you learn how to perfect the art of doing that? How is it that you manage to just single-handedly devour a show when someone decides to leave? You have to be prepared for that. Anyone, if you're writing and you plan on being a writer or anything like this, I'm sure you know, or at least you understand the idea, and sorry about that. I don't know why I just went super off white balance, but whatever. The point I'm making is, you know, and I'm sure you understand that that's not how you go about doing that. I don't know what these writers were thinking when they thought, oh, okay. Well, you know what? Let's kill Nick. And then when we kill Nick, let's kill Madison. And let's make Charlie, who's the one who kills Nick, a main character who we're supposed to like. What? Wh what? There is no coming back from that. Charlie has never once recovered in my head. And I know I'm going off on a tangent because I never even brought up Charlie prior to right now. But it's true. It's absolutely true. These decisions are stupid. And then the storylines that came in seasons four and five were just abysmal. I don't understand how you follow up what was a really tragic loss to your show with, like, losing the main cast to season five, which is just so stupid. It's so stupid. Now, again... There's a lot I could still praise, even in seasons four and five. I do praise Morgan coming into the show, even though it's it was stained for me. Morgan is my favorite character ever in the Walking Dead universe, but his introduction was like the wrong place at the wrong time. It just didn't make sense. Not that I don't like him now. I mean, obviously, it's Morgan. Inevitably, I'm going to end up liking what they do, and that's fine and all, but it just his introduction got so stained because you're losing your main cast to bring him in. And then you bring in John Dory and Althea and all of those people. And even though I like that dynamic and I like that group, I don't like bringing in all of these characters to switch around the show because this show became an entirely different show. We might as well not call it Fear the Walking Dead after season four because it has now become Morgan and Friends. There's no Clarks. Yes, there is Alicia and you build her up as a character, sure, but there's nothing there. There's no connective tissue. It's not as bad as something like Judith replacing Carl in the Walking Dead's canon series, but it's still just like, come on, it's the Clark story. Now it's the Morgan story? Pick one fucking side. And especially where that feels cheap. And there are some good moments in season six and seven and all of that, but especially where it feels cheap is to know that Madison's death 
apparently wasn't a death. Because now she's back in the end of season seven and in all of season eight. For what? At that point, why? Why? You heard all the backlash, so you listened to it. But really, the backlash should have been in your fucking faces. Whoever wrote this show, it should have been in your faces. Why would you do that from the start? It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And it, oh, it drives me off a wall. Jerry's getting upset. Once again, I'm getting upset, but it's absolutely true. It doesn't make sense that they brought her back because... Because how do you even explain what happened? Maybe they're going to do a little bit of that in time in season eight and explain a little bit of how she got out of the uh, the baseball court or whatever you call it. I can't think. I'm going off on a tangent, but whatever. They At some point, they have to explain it because it's the most unrealistic thing. There was like nowhere for her to go. She was surrounded by zombies and now just magically she's okay. That's ridiculous in and of itself. And I get she has to wear the gas mask thing, but still explain it because it's stupid. But this would have all been avoided if the writers were actually smart, like they were in season six, because in season six, they had ghost writers and those ghost writers made a fantastic season. If every season of Fear the Walking Dead was like season six, it would have been a much better show. But of course, we had they had to <laughs> write out and subcontract, you know, some writers to come up with a better story because the the showrunners didn't know what was going on clearly so they made Morgan's season just fantastic and it really was and that's why I'm saying I'm not complaining that Morgan came into the show but he couldn't have came at a worse time if anything it could have been the Madison and Morgan show okay if Frank Delane passed away in the show fine so what now it becomes the Madison show as well as Morgan and Alicia okay that's a great idea. I don't understand what was so hard about that. Maybe it was because of contracts and maybe it was that Madison Clark, uh, Kim Dickens, was expensive to keep around with, you know, Lenny James as well as some of the other plans they had. Maybe that was the reason. I don't know. But regardless, I'm sure they could have figured it out. The producers are smart people. They could have made do with a lot of things. But no, this is what we get. And again, it's not to say that it's bad. It's just to say you can play completely changed your show with one actor's decision to leave. And yes, while in fairness, it kind of is on him for leaving the show and making it not, you know, the same as it was, whatever. Sure. That's one thing, but it's on you as writers to fix that. It's on you as writers to make it better, but you didn't. You brought in Morgan and you made the show worse until it eventually rebounded a little bit, then went down again. Season six was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. The story with Teddy, the story with John Dory, the story with Morgan, all of them, even the fact that John Dory died and all that stuff, I'm okay with that because the story was just so good. But then season seven, just right down again. What? Like, I don't, I, it just really bothers me, especially because season eight, the trailer honestly looks good, except for the weird CGI head. But other than that, it actually looks good. And I'm very excited to see what they do just in general. It's honestly the only Walking Dead universe IP that I'm really looking forward to this year. But overall, it also has me on the edge of my seat. Like I need to, like, I need to strap in. You know what I mean? Because you don't know what you're going to get with this season. And that's not cool because it's been up, downs, up, downs, up, downs, up, downs the whole way. It really has. Seasons one through three were great, especially season three, in my opinion, the Gulch with Otis and stuff like that. That storyline was so awesome. It was so awesome. I loved it. And then seasons four, it started out okay, and then all the deaths happened, and then Morgan came in, and then that back plot with that weird, weird villain was just terrible. Season five, they were just running around saving people the whole time. Stupid. And then season six was awesome. Okay, season Season six was cool, but the point I'm making is the ebbs and flows are extremely, extremely strong in this show. This show's last season better be good. I hope it's good because honestly, it looks good, but I thought season seven looked good in the trailers too, but it was a pile of dog shit and it wasn't a pile of dog shit because the idea was bad. It was a pile of dog shit because the characters and their developments were just weird. Strand going off the deep end and becoming like the leader of the third Reich just did not feel right. It was just weird. And yes, Strand's always been a bad dude and all of that stuff, but he went off the deep end and he kind of became a diva with the way he's like, kill her. 
kill him, kill him. Like, it was just, it was stupid. It was so dumb. The ending was weird, too, honestly. I was going to say there's parts I like, but honestly, thinking about it, it, there wasn't. Alicia died, and I don't think she's coming back for season eight, which is so stupid. Stupid! It like ah oh man, it's just in every which way this try this show tried to do something right. It just did something wrong, and I I think that's kind of like unfortunate because I feel like the writers were put in a hard place, but. That's what they are supposed to be good at. This is their profession. I'm not attacking any single one of these people individually. It's not like one person's fault. It's just the overall decision making that led to these weird decisions, which I'm saying decisions a lot, but you get the point. The overarching decision tree that came to make everything happen from seasons four to so far season eight is just, it's mind boggling and it ebbed and flowed, but seasons one to three were so good and Really, I, I'm, I've just, I think I've explored everything I want to talk about in this video. You get the point. Fear the Walking Dead started out fantastic and then went really far downhill, and that is unfortunate. It really did become a lost puppy, and I wish it didn't. I would have loved to have just followed the Clark storyline. Unfortunately, Frank Delane left, but... You know, you, you get what I'm trying to say. Again, I'm not coming at Frank Delane and saying it's his fault. He saw the he saw the writing on the wall. He saw that the show went downhill with the writing and all of that stuff. I don't blame him for that. But the writers should have been able to adapt to it, and they didn't. And for that reason and many other reasons, the show inevitably falled. And I want to know what you guys have to say about that. Do you think it's as bad as I think it is? I don't know. Even though I'm excited for it, and I really do, I can't wait to see how they wrap it up, especially with, you know, Morgan apparently going back to King County, even if it's for a flashback. Just the idea of that storyline alone and then bridging the gap back towards Alexandria. I'm very excited to see what they do. I really am. I can't wait to see what happens. But I am. I'm holding on to my seat because... I've been promised stuff like this in the past with this show, and it just went bad. Like, just really quickly before I end this video, just the thought of season four of Fear the Walking Dead with the insane excitement we all had as a community for Morgan to go to that show, and the way it wrapped up in season eight of The Walking Dead, and the introduction of him in Fear, it was just so good, it was so exciting. We got Rick Grimes in Fear the Walking Dead for one episode, that's awesome. We got all of that stuff, which is so great, but then it just quickly went downhill, and that really is, it's so unfortunate, because the hype was so there. For the first time ever, I think the fans were like, finally, the show's gonna get really good, and not that it was bad before, it just wasn't on the same level as The Walking Dead. I don't think there was any debate about that, even though I liked seasons one to three, I don't think there's any debate that it wasn't nearly as good as The Walking Dead. But overall, the community came together for once, and then they fell apart for <laughs> for once and for all, really. Um, but yeah, this show's ebbed and flowed a lot, but that's my opinions on it. I think this show sucks now. I really do, and that sucks to say because it really had such a good start, and I was so excited to see what they would do with it, but they ruined it, unfortunately, and it is wasted potential. Um, but yeah, with all of that out of the way, I can't wait to start a healthy discussion with you down in the comments. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a like rating. If you dislike this video, dislike it. Go for it. No balls. Um, and yeah, with all of that out of the way, thank you once again so much for watching this video. And until the next one, I'll talk to you later. Peace out.